Okay, so the whole world at this stage has basically seen Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens. And if, like us, you left that movie theater completely satisfied, but still with some questions. So Mary and myself set down pen and paper, watched the movie a second time, and we've listed the seven most critical questions we need answered either before Episode 8 or during Episode 8. Who is Ray's family? Right now she's very mysterious, but that's kind of just typical of Star Wars at the moment. Every main character in the Star Wars movie seems to have a very mysterious family past. Anakin, Luke and Rey is now no different as well. So that's kind of to be expected at this stage. But what we really want to know is who left her on Jakku. She seemed to be kind of pulled away by the guy who was giving her the portions in the film. So perhaps she was sold to him. Maybe she, he had a big role in her upbringing. We don't know right now, but it's going to be exciting to find out what that is. I'm curious though, because whoever did leave her on Jakku... Um, left her with what was obviously some sort of scrap dealer or airship hoarder. Uh, My big question is, how exactly did Rey learn how to survive? Was there prior training? Maybe, and especially given her affinity with the Force, but perhaps uh, Rey was one of Luke Skywalker's Jedis, like Kylo Ren, who were learning to control the Force. And maybe that's what has helped her survive so long on Jakku. That is a popular fan theory at the moment, and it doesn't sound that far off from what could be reality as well. Well, we're going to have to make episode 8 to find out. Will Finn's actions inspire a Stormtrooper rebellion? Finn had a snap, a breaking point, on Jakku after witnessing the slaughter of all the villagers around him. At that point, he, as he says in the movie, made the decision between what was right and what was wrong. And he turned against all his training and all his conditioning. Uh, what exactly caused him to snap? Well... The, the violence in front of him. But is there a little bit more to this? Is the force involved? The man picked up a lightsaber and quickly was able to defend himself. Now, by all means, he still got his ass kind of whooped. But that level of proficiency, something tells me there's a little bit more to Finn that we're going to see. And hopefully that's going to come out in episode eight. Yes, because I kind of expected him to chop off his own arm whenever he picked that up and that didn't happen. Not that I'm, you know, disappointed about that or anything. But um, I think there was a whole big surprise there, whereas in the trailer, it seemed like Finn was going to be the one um, who had the Force awakened in him and um, that he was going to be a Jedi. But then it turned out to be Rey. But who knows, maybe both of them could end up being Force sensitive. So that'll be exciting to see as well. I don't think it has to be limited to just one out of the three main characters that are Force sensitive. I would actually be really excited to see two, whether that's Poe or Finn. Um, the bigger question is, will Finn's actions cause some sort of uprising within the Stormtrooper um, faction. He's turned, can others turn? And if so, will they turn and align themselves with the Rebels, fighting against the First Order, Phasma and Smoke? Smoke? Snoke? In the movie, Captain Phasma said that he had been sent, um, or at least he had been scheduled for reconditioning. And if there is reconditioning, that that can't mean that it was just Finn that has displayed some rebellious behaviour in the past. In fact, Hawks himself noted that there had been no rebellion, there had been no issues with him in the past, and because they're keeping track with that, there must that must mean that there were some other stormtroopers that have displayed those kind of tendencies. So it would be really interesting to see if there was a faction among the stormtroopers who, amongst themselves, were kind of rising up to fight against the First Order. Why did J.J. Abrams let Poe survive? He was initially meant to be killed off very very soon and then after a while he uh, called up Oscar Isaac and said no it's okay you're going to be in the whole movie so does that mean that Poe is going to have a major major role in the next few movies that would be really interesting to see I'm not quite sure what to make of Poe just yet for me of, of the three main characters he was the weakest that said there were a couple of things about him that have piqued my curiosity not only where exactly did he get a BB-8 and how can I get my hands on one? I want to know exactly how he got off Jakku. I'm a little bit suspicious. You don't just crash a TIE fighter onto a desert planet with somebody else uh, as your gunner and then completely abandon them, completely abandon your mission, tracking down BB-8 and, and the map that he was carrying and just suddenly reappear. I'm curious and there's more to Poe than that's been let on. So episode 8 definitely has to answer that question. What is Poe's deal? 
I know he could have gone to where Ray and Finn and the whole disaster where everything was being bond, bombed happened, but he seemed to disappear very, very quickly. So it'll be really, really interesting to see if that's just a simple plot hole or if there were other f- factors at play there. Everybody has asked this question. What the hell happened to Captain Phasma? Many fans are now speculating that she has survived, she's made her way off the planet, and is going to start looking for revenge or some way to redeem herself. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think we're going to see Phasma coming back under the First Order. I think there's been uh, too much dishonour. I think she won't be able to show her face. And if she did, I don't think she'd do it in front of Snoke ever again. I'd like to see Phasma going down the route of a Boba Fett. I would love to see um, a female bounty hunter tracking down Finn, trying to enact her revenge against him. Yeah, I was well aboard that hype train, but it de- it never really seemed to get into the station. She was bigged up in marketing to seem like this major, major character, and that just wasn't the case in this movie. The actress who plays her, Gwendolyn Christie, has signed up for another movie as well, so obviously she's going to be in the next film. She did not get turned into a little cube in that compactor. Um, so yeah, I would agree. I would hope she would kind of take charge in this and really, really put, put a bit of life to the character. I want to know what really made Kylo Ren turn to the dark side. Obviously, so far, we know that he was seduced by Snoke, but really, he seems to come across as kind of an emo at the moment, but is this for life? Anakin obviously managed to redeem himself in the end, and Kylo Ren seems to have put him on a pedestal. Does he really want to become Darth Vader? Is he just completely ignorant to the fact that Darth Vader did redeem himself at the last few moments. Chances are he is because Luke was the only person with him whenever that happened. So it's very likely that the rest of the the galaxy doesn't know uh, what Darth Vader's final moments were. So perhaps Kylo Ren is under the impression that Darth Vader was the ultimate evil and that's what he wants to become as well. But I would really like to see if he is redeemed as well. I think it might be a little bit of a cop-out if he does manage to do that. I would almost rather Kylo Ren did personify true evil and just kept going to the darkest of the dark side. On that note, I want to know exactly why, after murdering his father and embracing the dark side wholly, what, where, where the power went, what, what caused him to suddenly um, shrivel up and just become this weakling. His final battle against Rey, he got owned. And yes, he did get shot. We have to take that into consideration. But even still, he has been trained in the Force, he's been trained with the lightsaber, and he was literally kicked left, right, and center. Um, I want to know what what's the power level difference between him and Rey. And I also want to know why Leia, if she was so involved in her son's life and believed so much in the fact that there was light still within him, why she didn't get aboard the Millennium Falcon and help bring her son back to the light, help bring her son back out from under the clutches of Supreme Leader Snoke. For sure. If I was Leia, I would have gone there and dragged him by his rather large ears back home because I don't. I just straight up don't understand why Han was the one that was going to be bringing him back when Kylo clearly has a lot of disdain for him and considers him a bad father. Who thought that was a good idea? Did Leia think that was going to end well? I think there would have been a lot more chance that he would have leaned towards the light if it was Leia facing him rather than Han. What has Luke Skywalker been doing all this time? We know after the events of Episode 6 that he started training a new generation of Jedi. That didn't go the way he expected. And all of a sudden he vanishes, he disappears. If Luke didn't want to be found, then he couldn't have picked a better place Skellig Michaels is literally the back arse of nowhere. So what I want to know is, has he been there the whole time? And also, if he didn't want to be found, why was there a map in the first place to his whereabouts? That whole thing really, really confused me. And obviously, how did Laura Santeca get part of that map? And we're told as well in the movie that the Empire had part of the map as well. So either that's a massive plot hole as well, or it's going to be something that I hope will be answered in episode 8. So I think the final important question was, who is Supreme Leader Snoke? Obviously, he's incredibly powerful. He seems to have General Hux and Kylo Ren playing off each other like bickering brothers. And more interesting still, is he actually that big? Obviously, we've seen in previous Star Wars movies that the holograms aren't any indication of how large or small a person is 
necessarily. So he could be as small as Yoda or he could be as big as we've seen on the screen now. What I think might, is interesting is that there's a fan theory floating about that Luke faced Snoke uh, after he seduced Kylo Ren to the dark side and that's why he has all of those scars. So obviously he's completely shrouded in mystery right now. What we see is literally what we get. I'd like to know exactly where he came from. There's, Snoke just literally seems to have, have appeared like smoke. We, and a lot of people have compared him to Emperor Palpatine, that he this, this twisted, mangled figure uh, all in robes. There's something a little bit more, there's something a little bit more unnerving about the character. For me, I'd, I'd like to know a little bit more about his origins. Has, has he always been there? Has he been there at the time of Vader and Palpatine? in the background, in the shadows, playing them. It's going to be interesting to see exactly what we learn about the character in episode 8. There's a lot of speculation right now, but what we can say for sure is that not all fan theories are created equal. And I think the most ridiculous fan theory that we've heard so far is that Snoke is actually Jar Jar Binks. I think we can say for certainty that that is absolutely not true, but you can judge for yourselves. Misa, hope it's true. So those are our seven most important questions that we had whenever we finished watching The Force Awakens. If you have answers to any of our questions, then make sure to put it below in the comments section. From us at the Arcade, may the Force be with you.